Right, welcome back. And in this video, let's talk about sensory acuity. And so sensory acuity, we said that from moment to moment, we can notice minute changes that our clients actually make. So first of all, we can notice the eyes. And so we can notice whether or not the pupils are dilated or undilated, whether the eyes are focused or defocused. Let's, let's talk about uh, the skin tone. And so the skin tone, we could be looking at little micro muscle movements within the face and also looking if the face is symmetrical or not. So if you could imagine that there's a split down the middle of the face, does the left hand side and the right hand side look the same? So uh, there's a famous actor, of course, we know that you know, he, he speaks a little bit like this. And so essentially, you know, the left hand side and the right hand side don't, uh, don't look exactly the same. And so this might be something that the client does. Uh, example, you know, wincing with pain, the client goes, oh. And so we can notice that there's a, a change. We've also got skin color. And so skin color, we talk about from light to dark. It's not white to red, it's light to dark. And so what happens is that as soon as we've got more blood flow to the skin, then of course the, uh, it looks, if somebody was very, very white, then it might look like you know, they, they're getting red in the face. However, if we were working with a client that's very dark, you wouldn't necessarily notice the redness. What you would notice is that the skin goes darker. So we don't look for white to red, it's light to dark. Uh, next we've got lower lip size and so the best way to describe lower lip size is if you if you look at the lower lip you may or may not have noticed before that you've got those little lines in your lip and so it's not so much that the lower lip expands it's uh, if you can imagine again you've got more blood flow going to the lip now because there's more blood flow so the blood vessels expand and by doing that it's almost like blowing up a balloon if you take a balloon and you've just taken it out the packet and it's kind of sticking to itself. When you blow it up, those creases start to open up and they start to expand. And then, of course, the creases disappear. And that's the same thing with the lower lips. As there's more blood, the, 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 the lips expand that little bit and the little micro lines become less or maybe even disappear. And then, of course, we've got our breathing. And so breathing, we could look at the, the rate of the breathing and also the location of the breathing. So our client might be breathing up here on the top of their chest and then their breathing might shift down to their gut. Their breathing might go from very slow to much faster and again vice versa. So we want to be looking at breathing. Of course, notice though that we can notice whatever you notice. It doesn't just have to be those five things. You know, Erickson famously said when they asked him, how do you know that that lady went into trance? And he said that I noticed it because the pulse on her left ankle changed. So that's wonderful sensory acuity, of course, you know, being able to notice a pulse change. And you certainly can do that. You know, one of the places that you could notice a pulse change uh, as well might be in the neck. Or, you know, sometimes people have uh, veins, uh, you know, up in their head. The point being is you notice whatever it is that you notice. And we're not saying what that particular change means. We just say that there is a change. And within context, that change may give us some clues. So again, that's sensory acuity. I hope you found that useful. And as a reminder, what some of the things are that you might be looking out for.